What's up, Pickle Pape? So today is a fun, completely unnecessary, but did I mention fun one that we are doing covering. So has anyone seen those awesome GIFs as profile images over in their Google accounts? Like, yeah. So like I said, totally useless and fun, but that's what we're going for today because I want one and if I want them, then I bet you do too. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you in just a second. So without further ado, let's get to it. To the computer! Okay, Pickle Peeps, so if you have no clue I'm talking about, and I don't really know how you found this video then, but anyway, um, this right here is what I am talking about. I'll see if I can zoom in on camera, but this is emails I get from Peng Jun, and every time I see them, I'm just like, ugh! Could be because, like, the fandom interest, the fun stuff, all that, like, I get it. I love it. I want it. I want to be that cool, having a, um, GIF as a profile picture on Google. So, let's get to it. First thing we're gonna need is a Canva account. Um, now, Honestly, I like to do this on a pro. The version that I'm going to teach you this really requires a pro, but if you don't want to cut out your backgrounds, then don't worry about it. You can do it on free Canva too. If you um, want to try Canva Pro for free, um, I have a link down below for you to do so. Alrighty, so we are on Canva, and now if you look for just like profile templates, it's going to give you, I don't know what to pop is. But Facebook profiles are frames are 1500 by 1500. For a Google one, the profile size is 250 by 250. So I'm actually going to go over here to do a custom size as oops, 250 by 250. Create design. Good. Alrighty, if you want to use the same thing for Facebook or at least one of these images, you can always just resize it in Canva. That's pretty easy. Alright, so if you're over here, if you want to search in templates, you can look at profiles and templates. And it'll give you all of these kinds of things. And they're really cool. Now, the thing to definitely note is that the Facebook one is going to, or the sorry, the Google profile image is going to be a circle for what they use. So anything outside of that circle kind of doesn't matter. So you can totally use any of the ones that they have here, um, or we can just play around. I Honestly, I think that's a pretty cool one right there if I was to use any of these, but that's just me. So what we are going to need is a couple images of you or whatever you want to do. If you have cool variations of your logo, like, ooh, it'd be cool to be like black and white color, black and white color. I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking out loud. Um, but what we're going to do is create um, several pages that are all the different images that you have that you want to use. So I'm going to come over here into uploads. All right. So I have a whole bunch. Um, so we're over here in uploads. I was just looking through. It's like, oh, what do I have? I do selfie shoots at the beginning of every single video. If you want to laugh, I actually have a video about how I do my um, YouTube thumbnails. I'll link it above and you guys can see that part. But these are all from the upcoming June gift guide challenge. Let's go through a whole bunch of, I'm, you guys know it, you see me all the time. I am a huge fan of the funny faces. Uh, you don't have to be if you don't want to be funny faces. That's fine. You don't need them. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead here. I'm going to duplicate and I think I'm going to want like five pages here. Okay. We'll start with that one, that one, that one, Ooh. down here. This is exactly how I would do it. Probably not, but that's a-okay. It's a bunch of them without being in all different outfits. All right. So now the part that's going to take a second and why I encourage you to have a pro account is to use background eraser. That way we can put something fun behind all of these. So I'm going to go ahead to my first one, edit image, background remover. And I'm going to jump skip right here. So you guys have to see me do this. I'm going to do the same thing to all of these images. And excellent. Okay, we have the background removed on all of these. And I'm going to go ahead and just make them a little bit bigger so we actually take up the majority of the space. Now remember when Google uh, does their crop it's only go they're only going to be taking a circle portion in there so like don't have important parts of you in the bottom that might get cut off. 
and excellent now the last thing I want to do on these because it's me is I want to do some quick um, color edits so on all of these I'm just going to my adjustments and I know what works well for me and it's like I said I do these on all of my YouTube covers I do a 10 15 20 on brightness contrast and saturation and it at least gets my hair where I want it to the right color <laughs> But I like my colors to be a bit more vibrant. And boom. Okay, that's all done. Now comes the fun part. And I'll be honest, I probably should have waited to do um, resize my images. Because now we're going to look for backgrounds. So I'm going to come into Elements. And you could do things like this cool bokeh effect, which I believe was on. Okay, problem solved here. So, <laughs> learn something new every day. This is awesome. If you are playing with resizing your images, and like I said, I probably should not have resized them right away. I should put backgrounds on here first. But if you have this issue, simply right click on your image. Or say the issue is, see how I can't make it any smaller. It has now become the background of my post. Right click on the image and you'll see there is this detach image from background button. Click that and it'll boom, it'll resize it back to your smaller one and there we go. It'll clear it up, don't worry. And that's just made my life so much easier. All right, so now we have us, we're all colored, done. Hopefully you have all of your pictures set. So now we're gonna put backgrounds in. So I can just grab this like bokeh and that would be really cool. Bokeh, bokeh, whatever you spell that, B-O-K-E-H. And that gives you like the cool light blurs. So those are really cool. Um, what Peng Jun used in his, you can look for a gradient. Now gradients are a lot easier to look for if you're looking for a specific color. Like I personally so love this blue to blue. We could do pink to blue. Really what I'm looking for, that looks like a sunset right there, is like red to blue. Okay, so if you're not getting what you want out of gradients, you can add colors to it. So you could say red to blue gradient, spell things right. And that one's a bit more on the patriotic vibe that I was going for with this one. So let's drop that in here. Of course, that one I liked wasn't actually a photo. It was more of an element. So, all right, you can grab this one. That's cool. Okay, I searched patriotic gradient, didn't really work, but I am so loving the stars background. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that's too much fun to not have in here. So like sometimes you just have to play with your, um, your keywords that you're looking with. Okay, I'll take it, whatever. So now that I have um, backgrounds on everybody, We'll see if I actually use this one. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to put myself back and center. Ah, what happened? There we go. Okay. I just hit undo it. I think it did that like detach from background thing again. So strange, but whatever. So looking at this, I think I want to go ahead and put a shadow on myself and I'm going to put an outline. So I'm going to do a glow, hit it again to get the settings. too thick. I think a two works well on there. Apply. That's better. Just to like pop it off a little bit. And if you decide to do the outlines again, do that before you do your color edits. I'm going to do this to the rest of these images and then I will meet you back here. Okay, so we have our images in here and now we want to see, we want to turn it into a GIF. We want to see what it's going to look like. Now, you can choose how long it's going to be in here. It's automatically going to give you five seconds for each page. That is not a gift. That is way, 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 way too long to be dealing with. And here we want these images moving fast. Remember our sample one. Um, we have also no way to preview that. So Canva's a little wonky in that if you didn't choose a video template to begin with, then it won't give you that play button unless you have an actual moving graphic. Even though you can choose how long you want each um, each image to be on screen. So what I'm just going to come over here and do is go to elements and I'm going to grab an animated element. And as soon as I put that on here, boom, look at this. We have our, I'm just going to pull that down and out. And we can get rid of it afterwards. 
no problem. So now let's hit our play button and see what we get. Ta-da! I'm going to hit play again because this is just showing it as a video. Not bad, not bad. Let's see if I went on here under animate. To get back to that simple animation, I'm going to get rid of this. I don't know why Canva is like this, but whatever. So if we want to say, okay, maybe that's still moving too fast. Let's move it to point four. We can click apply to all pages. Um, that way, no matter how many pages you have, you can get them all going at the same time. And let's put our element back in here so we can preview that. That's a little small. And preview. That's not bad either. I'm kind of liking it. All right, so I'm going to get rid of my little element and it's time to download. So I'm just going to go into the share button, download. Now, you do not want to save these as PNGs. You want to, if you're on Pro, you can export it as a GIF. If you do not have uh, Canva Pro, you can export it as an MP4 or a video file, then upload it to something like Giphy and then download the GIF. <laughs> Um, but since I have Pro, I'm going to go for the GIF, download, and I'll see you in the next part. Okay, next up we are going to come into our Google account where we can do the change. Now, if you're in a Google Workforce account, you're going to need to go into the admin settings to be able to change this stuff around. If you're just working off of a standard regular Gmail, then what you would do is click on your Google account, and on there you're going to have the little camera button, click that. And now this is where we can change our profile picture. So I'm going to go ahead and click change. And I want to upload from computer. And there we go. Ta-da! We can go ahead and click save as profile picture, but like that's pretty awesome, isn't it? And since it could take a day or two to see a change across all of your Google services, I have no idea what this is going to do on my YouTube, but whatever. This, I think, is adorable and fun. So, um, things I am noticing right now, and I don't know, I do know when you download a GIF, it lowers the quality, so maybe instead of 250 by 250, we should have did it in 500 by 500, um, just to have double that resolution, and that might have, with the compression, worked a little better in here. I don't know. Thoughts for next time. And there we have it. Pickle Peep, what do you think? Totally pointless and fun, right? <laughs> And they're the kinds of, these are the itty bitty teeny tiny things that just make you happy in business, or at least make me happy in business. <laughs> and I will be looking to the Google workforce part. I try not to go into the admin side as much as possible um, to see how to do it there. And that's about it. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a like, hit the subscribe button. Tomorrow we're going to be going into now how to make an animated signature for your emails. And no, I'm not talking about signing. I am not that skilled. I'm talking about having an animated, um, you'll see. It's the sign out part in your email. Totally cool when you nail it. Totally pro too. All right. Um, we will see you guys in the next one. Till then, 